Okay, so what uh, we will be going, uh, doing today is we will be defining our enterprise structure in the system. We have discussed all the theory aspects and we have discussed all the enterprise structure. So what we will do is uh, I will just open the WordPad and I will take an example and I will write down few points that what is the business about and where it is operating, where the business has business locations and where it is transacting and then I want uh, like your inputs what entity what what how many legal entities will be created how many ledgers will be created how many uh, locations or business units or inventory orgs will be created so I want your inputs in that because we have already discussed the theory aspects so it would be a good exercise okay so uh, let's take an example let's say for example this company is operating in, in in automobile sector it's a car manufacturer okay by the name uh, let's say marsh motors okay so this is a car manufacturer marsh motors and uh, they have their headquarters in US and the countries that they are operating in two countries that is US and Canada okay US and Canada and the kind of products and services they provide is of like of a normal car manufacturer they sell cars uh, in cars also they have different uh, different segments like they sell uh, <coughs> they sell trucks and hatchbacks or all, all those uh, commercial vehicles plus the normal cars that they sell so they have two different vari uh, segments in that the different line of businesses plus they have uh, uh, they do after sale services as well like we do the servicing for the car so for uh, that they are registered separately they have two different uh, registrations or I would say as let's say Marsh Motors Limited Marsh uh, Motors Services Limited okay so these are the two registrations line of businesses are again like we said commercial vehicles and the normal cars that we have cars or trucks whatever you can say that so, so the different Marsh, the Marsh Motors Limited what you have written is uh, is the same what is there in the first line also right correct okay, so this is this is this is a this is a car manufacturer right okay so then this is the different line of businesses they they operate cars trucks and they provide services after sales service and the like the car repairs and all those services and they operate out of three locations in US where they have three different outlets in US where they are selling and purchasing and all those things like three outlets in US and one in Canada one outlet in Canada and they have one manufacturing plant and this manufacturing plant is in US any country any particular city like what you say is uh, just just for the easiness of the example it is US for now I'm not putting any specific uh, city or any location addresses right now okay so this this is this is my uh, information now I want uh, you to tell me how many uh, legal entities will be there the questions uh, that has to be answered is what would be the enterprise first of all okay next question how many uh, legal entities would be there then I want how many ledgers would be created then I also want the answer for how many business units we will be creating and uh, then I want the answer how many inventory orgs we will be creating okay so the, we have some differences here uh, we will discuss enterprise is fine enterprise is only one because all the head everything is under one enterprise let me draw a diagram here Ashish uh, one thing uh, uh, the ledgers right uh, there will be two ledgers right we we should defend two ledgers right the primary yeah, we, the US one. We, we will discuss that don't go into secondary ledgers for now we are just discussing primary ledgers so just uh, for the secondary ledgers just forget about <coughs> that right now for this discussions we are not having secondary ledger into picture at all okay so then okay anyways.
So legal entity, are you sure about it that you will be having uh, only two legal entities? Um, I'm seeing um, Marsh Motors Limited is one legal entity and Marsh Motors Service are the two legal entities. There is no other... Um, uh, okay, if, I don't know how the registration process in Canada. If the Canada is registered as a separate company, then that could be a third legal entity. I don't know. Correct, that's right. So we are operating in two countries. We have to understand whether the registration is only one. The brand name can be same. We, we can use the same brand name across the globe. But every country has different registration because for every registration there is a jurisdiction. You, you have a jurisdiction for every registration. Once you register this organization, it is not applicable worldwide. So every country will have its own registration. So that is the reason if uh, they are operating out of Canada and they want a single entity or two entities, it depends whether they are operating uh, out of one entity or two entity. If in this scenario they want the revenue to be separated for Motors Limited and Motor Service Limited, then there will be four legal entities. Or if they are operating out of only one entity in Canada, then it would be three. But these two are there already there. Yeah, ideal condition it could be four, yes, I agree. <coughs> Correct. Correct. So this would be my legal entity. <coughs> Don't you think you should have like divisions before this? Divisions are not, not mandatory. So so, in, or like, so when you do from the SCN point of view, you are still going to divide def, define the divisions, right? US division and UK division. And under US, we have these business units and everything. Or no? Sorry, in what? Sorry? I say if you are going it from the HCM point of view where you are defining this structure, in that case, right. are you going to... It is, it is not mandatory. Again, it is optional. It depends. Those where uh, they, if they want to depict the organization structure, then they create, like they create organization hierarchy and some security profiles and some uh, access is given on the basis of security profile. So those things happen there. So then we create the divisions and all those things there. Here it is not required. So if I create a division, say here under this diagram, then do I have to assign a value for chart of accounts for that division? No. So here it is not mandatory only to create the division, manual physical division, but still you can create it in your chart of accounts. That's what I'm trying to explain that if, if we want to use it under procurement or anywhere, then we depict it in our chart of accounts. Okay. So these are the two entities. This is for the US and similarly you will have the entities for... Yes, let's put, let's to put two more boxes for Canada, say. Yeah. Ashish, the fourth, fourth legal entity, the service for Canada, depending upon what is the situation, it can be just one legal entity for Canada also, right? Sorry? Depending upon the Canada situation, the, whether the service has to be a separate legal entity as per whatever the requirement, if they say no, it has no need to be a separate, then we could map this in three legal entities. Yeah, you can have the one, one legal entity only then. Okay, so these are my legal entities, all right? And then we have ledgers, okay? How many ledgers are you saying? Okay, now for the ledger, you have one more question, right? <coughs> what is the calendar type? We didn't know that between these two. Whether US and Canada are going to operate in the same calendar, that's one of the parameters which needed to design the ledger. I know right. that. So it has the same calendar. That's a Jan to December. The calendar is same. Okay. So we have the calendar same, currency same, and the uh, country is different. Uh, so we so far we have got uh, two ledgers. And the fourth one is... We have, we have four Cs. We have four Cs. Yeah. So the... Okay. According structure, so is it same between US and Canada? According structure, the way it's almost same. I don't see any significant difference. But One COA. I, so it basically comes to two. Correct. So you will be having two ledgers here. One for US and one for Canada. <coughs> Everyone understands why we are going to have two ledgers, right? So we had four parameters in the chart of accounts, right? Oh, sorry, in the for defining the ledger chart right. of accounts. Currency. Chart of accounts, currency, calendar, and accounting convention. Accounting convention. Right. So in this chart of account is same, currency is same, calendar is same, convention is same. So we are having still two ledgers. We are we are legally operating in two different countries, two right? Two different, different country. No, but Canada has Canadian dollars, right? Canada has Canadian dollars. U has has US dollars, right? So currency will be changing, right? How will it be same? So I, I, was just, I was saying which which piece is changing. So it's a currency which is changing. Exactly. <clears throat> so you have same chart of accounts. Let's say Marsh COA. Okay. 
which will say US, US will have US gap, right? Yeah, so in system it is like standard accrual what we select. So, or you can say US gap here, okay? And then the currency is UK. Here, let's say they are following IFRS. Or even if it is the same gap, still it would be a different ledger because of the currency. Your IFRS or Canadian gap, whatever they are following, you can write it down here. Now I want answer for the business unit. Someone said there will be two business units. Someone said there will be three. Someone said there could be four. So how many business units we are going to have from the system standpoint? You can have like depending on how many, at least two, at two at least, and you can use the same business unit to create your purchase order system as well. So yeah. in system standpoint, uh, you can have uh, one legal entity for one business unit. Hmm or you can use multiple legal entities in one business unit. So you can assign one of them as default and you can assign the second legal entity also to the same business unit. Yeah, you do not assign it as such, but you can use it there. You, it's yeah, so, so all your so all one your is there as default and others, others you can use. Otherwise, there is a checkbox when we create a business unit, use below legal entity. If we enable that checkbox, then only one legal entity can be used under it. Yeah, so basically, so if there are two legal entities assigned to the same business unit, then the, at the lowest level, you are capturing transactions at legal entity, but they can roll up up to business unit. If you need. So, what is the normal process like? Uh, is it uh, is it is it the um, uh, what is the criteria here? Um, because the way I see it, if you have um, three locations and you have two legal entities, um, let's associate um, one business unit, three three business units as one legal entity, another three as another legal entity, and six business units, like the way I'm thinking. But it can be done in the other way also. So what is the, what is the best way? So you have to ask one question that uh, in system standpoint, you need bare minimum of two here to work because you have two different ledgers. So bare minimum required is two but then after that you have three different stores in us one store in canada okay now you have to ask the question whether you want to allow these locations stores uh, outlets to see the data of each other whatever transactions they are performing the sales they are doing any procurement that they are doing any expense they are incurring from payable side or any of those sub -ledgers whether you want to allow these locations to review or view the data of each other if the answer is yes then you can go for one business unit if the answer is no then you have to have three different business units for these uh, locations and the normal process the app but the car manufacturing example what you took may not be the right example because dealers want to see what is the inventory in other locations so that they can swap right don't don't go into inventory right now just I'm um, like business units just talk like we will be discussing of the business units because inventory would be different inventory organization is different and it is controlled at the inventory organization level so the manufacturing unit so don't, don't you think we would need a, a business unit for that too or you don't at all need it you don't need why do you need a business unit for manufacturing so if you remember the definition of an inventory organization last time we discussed all of your inventory related transactions which are done any of your storage uh, receiving or manufacturing plants everything for all of those things uh, if you want to track the on hand quantity of your inventory uh, your what is your stock or uh, and everything all those inventory related transactions we do inventory organization and inventory access inventory. also yeah. depends on the inventory organization so business unit is our subledger we discussed lot of lot of details about it that it only tracks our subledgers related to payables sub receivables yeah. procurement self service procurement sourcing so these these subledgers are secured by business units while the inventory uh, is secured by the inventory organization so their business inventory. unit yeah. yeah we have to attach a default management business unit to the inventory orgs but uh, all those inventory items and everything manufacturing plant we will not create it as a business unit we will create it as a inventory organization yes, now yes. I want the answer how many inventory organizations now we have decided that four business unit I uh, how many inventory orgs should we create we only have one manufacturing plant here in US before we go to the inventory org on the business unit side we have three locations we created two, three US business unit in Canada we created one 
the manufacturing location doesn't have to be a business unit for uh, any kind of direct procurement to the manufacturing locations no if you want to have a global procurement that can be a separate business unit no but i'm saying okay. manufacturing if you have a manufacturing plant you do not need to have a separate business unit for it agreed i'm just talking because the questions i'm going to ask is what i have come across in the as a functional life right so when you have a procurement definitely you're going to procure um services raw materials um, directly purchasing delivering to that particular location and i'm assuming there will be have the flexibility to procure something not everything can be done centrally so if i have to do some procurement at least something basic right so then example, yes have, yes yes so discussion. so if you want to directly like uh, locations can be anything locations can be different so if if uh, those manufacturing plant can be associated with this business unit too and you can have different delivery to locations that is a different thing but if you want to have a separate procurement just for the manufacturing plant and you do not want these business unit to see the data of those then yes you can have a separate uh, business unit for it but you can do the procurement within these business units only any of and you can have a delivery to location so the the goods will be delivered to your manufacturing uh, location okay so there is a slight uh, conceptual thing here uh, if like we have three business units then we at least need three inventory organizations here so the concept wise if in the system we have three different business units we need to create though the manufacturing plant is only one there is only one manufacturing plant but still you will be creating three inventory organizations but the location of that manufacturing plant or inventory organization would be one okay and uh, you can have still have one master item uh, master inventory or master uh, item organization you can still have that so there are two concepts basically and in from the procurement standpoint it is not uh, like mandatory so master item is different than inventory or let me explain that so this would be your manufacturing plant location because if you have a same distribution center or something which is distributing the products or one manufacturing plant so it would be having the one location but different inventory orgs in the system because the business units are different so in like we have right now one manufacturing plant Uh, mm -hmm. if we we if we also have a warehouse which is different than a manufacturing plant right then like we are going to add one more inventory org yes then you will be having another inventory org if you have another the warehouse, warehouse by default yes that's the thumb rule warehouse so, by be, warehouse it would be it would be a separate inventory org it would be a separate inventory org and manufacturing plant then it should also be a separate inventory org yes because it yeah. is a different different one right so in this one you have three inventory org so we should have for one attached to manufacturing plant also then okay so i think conceptually now we are clear so this is just for our example for our understanding so that you understand what is the concept that's why i haven't in real time it should be different only obviously i just took okay. this example so that from system standpoint you understand that where to create which organization and what so in in total we have only one inventory org that in one inventory org is attached to three bus am i correct in system it would be three different inventory organizations for each business unit which will have the same location